If you have watched any of my videos on uh, home cast aluminium, you know that over the last four years or so I've been casting my own aluminium bar stock. And all this was due to my good friend Rob and watching videos on his channel um, showing how he made his first furnace and how he casts his own aluminium. And um, yeah, it, I've been very successful with it. I'm very lucky. I managed to uh, <clears throat> uh, and obtain a source of free scrap aluminium so I don't have to pay for the aluminium. And generally speaking, my uh, aluminium casting works quite well. So usually, when I'm casting bar stock, I use very simple molds. These are seamless steel tubes with a plug in the end, which you can remove in case you need to tap the aluminium out. But nine times out of 10, it just falls out. So, uh, and this all works superbly. And for these uh, larger billets, I use uh, a <laughs> very cheap uh, tuna fish tin as a mold and that, that they've been working superbly. I've done loads of, uh, loads of casts in that. Now, the other day I needed some two inch diameter, well, roughly two inch, maybe two and a quarter, something like that, aluminium bar stock. Now, okay, I could turn, this is this is roughly three inches, this block. Yeah, I could turn that down, but it's an awful lot of waste and I, I don't like waste and I know I get it for free, but it's still waste in my opinion. <clears throat> so I thought, well, okay, how am I gonna cast a, a nice round two and a quarter ish, -ish, -ish uh, block of aluminium? So I had a hunt around and I couldn't find anything that would be suitable as a mould for that size aluminium. So I thought, okay, well, there's got to be another way of doing this. And then I remembered that, obviously, over the four years I've been doing this casting, I have cast some pulleys and some flywheels and various other things for which I needed casting flasks, which I knocked up very crudely out of some scrap wood that I had lying around. And here's a good example of the uh, three wooden ones. I think I've got a metal one somewhere kicking about as well. But these are um, all made out of scrap wood, but they've worked very well for me. And I thought, well, okay, so I can't find anything suitable for a mold, but maybe I could find something suitable uh, as a pattern that I could simply stick it in, a, in, in, in one of the casting flasks. And um, I was looking around and sure enough, an old plastic pot which had vitamin C tablets in it. And, and the nice thing about these pots is they're very strong. You, they're very difficult to compress. So you could easily pack sand around that and it's not gonna deform. The other thing is, of course, I can't, if I want something this diameter, I can't have it too deep because obviously my crucible that I melt my aluminum in isn't very big. So I can I probably get enough aluminum out of one crucible to make a block that big of that size and that's that's exactly the right diameter for what I want so we're gonna have a go at doing this and it will be an open sand cast because uh, it doesn't really matter what the tops like because it's all gonna get faced off and turned down so yeah let's have a go at it using simple bottle for a pattern now I'm gonna use a lump of uh, steel plate there for the base and just pop that down in there that's what we're gonna stand the and I've uh, stand the pot on I've given the plastic pot a good dust in with the uh, parting powder we'll pop that in there and yeah it's just a matter of um, dumping in the uh, casting sand and pack packing it down Sand. 
Okay, that's as far as I want to go with it. Oh, by the way, the reason it's in the metal tray, this makes it easy to transport. And if there's any spills of aluminium, it stops it from going out on the concrete when I get outside to do the pour. So yeah, so now we've got to do is the, the tricky bit is <laughs> removing the uh, plastic pot without the whole lot, um, you know, crumbling to pieces. So let's try turning it first. I mean, it's pretty smooth sided, this thing. So hopefully it will come out okay. Just use my fingers to press the lip down a bit. Yeah, there we go. Lovely. That will do very nicely. Nice clean hole. I'll move the camera so you can have a better look. There you go. Um, so we'll just get the furnace fired up and pull the aluminium straight in there and hopefully we'll have a nice, uh, nice clean billet of uh, aluminium. Hopefully a successful pour with a bit of luck. Well, <coughs> it's about an hour and a half after I did the pour and it's obviously still quite hot. The sand is quite warm, but obviously by now the um, aluminium is more than solidified. So um, it's time to remove it from the sand. And you have to be careful when you're doing this sort of thing, because like I said, you know, it's this, the, the aluminium is still very hot and aluminium melts at 660 degrees C, which is roughly 1220 degrees F. And obviously the crucial inside the furnace gets even hotter than that. So yes, it takes a long time for it to cool off and the furnace will be outside for several hours uh, cooling off. But uh, we can certainly uh, we can certainly take it out of the sand and have a look and see what's 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 happened. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> you couldn't wish for a more perfect <laughs> sand extraction than that and just lift it straight off. And um, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Can't really see much in the way of inclusions. Um, I'll bring you down closer in at a better angle. Yeah, well pleased with that. Obviously there's quite a lot of shrinkage in the top here. Uh, you'd expect that because it's a, a quite a large chunk, but uh, no, oh, I don't think there's much wrong with that at all. Um, yeah, so good proof of concept that um, this is a good way to uh, cast large aluminium bar stock if you don't have a mold for it, but you do have, a, um, I mean, you don't even need a proper uh, sand casting flask. A wooden box would do absolutely fine. Just something to contain the sand. Um, obviously a nice metal tray is useful. Uh, like I said, it's that's just a, a safety precaution, but um, yeah, it worked very well. And, and as you probably noticed, I put a little uh, caption up in, in the bit of the video where I did the pour. This was the very first pour of my new Crucible. Yes, I've got a brand new high-tech Crucible. Yes, I think it was about seven pounds, a uh, stainless steel tea caddy. So the reason for that is I was using stainless steel cups as my caddies. And I'll show you one of those. Yeah, these were the original Crucibles. Um, the first one lasted about three years before it sprang up a leak. And the second one, I think this is the second one, 
This one lasted about three pours before it sprang leak. Now these are stainless steel cups, cheapest chips you get them off uh, Amazon, anywhere pretty much, but they're quite thin. So, and they were great. They did the, well the first one I said did the job for ages, but uh, I saw this cheap tea caddy on, uh, I think it was on eBay. Let's move those out of the way. And uh, I thought, yeah, that will do the job nicely. And as you can see, that's a larger capacity. Now my furnace is, uh, the internal diameter of the uh, furnace is quite small. So obviously you can't have anything too too large. And, and this is about the same diameter as the top of these, but obviously it's much deeper. And it's also much thicker. These are quite thin and this is, this is quite thick. So I'm hoping that will, uh, that will last a, a bit better. Uh, as you can see this, the remains of the aluminium in there. I don't know if you can see that, but, but yeah, it works very well. And uh, if anyone's wondering why I use stainless steel containers as my crucible, very good reason for that. Obviously, normally a crucible would be graphite, and that's that's the commonest material for crucibles. But the problem with that is that graphite crucibles tend to have very thick walls. They are a quarter to half an inch thick. So, of course, that means that the kind of graphite crucible I could fit in my furnace is it's going to have a very small quantity, um, a very small, uh, hold a very small quantity of, of molten aluminium, whereas these things can hold a reasonable amount. <clears throat> and although stainless steel is not a very good conductor of heat, the beauty of it is that whereas, as I said earlier, aluminium melts at 660 degrees C, which is 1220 degrees F, stainless steel doesn't melt until f over 1500 degrees C, which is, um, what's 1500, uh, 2700 and something degrees F. So the Maya furnace is not likely to get anywhere near that hot inside so that this should survive the heat no problem at all and it certainly gets it gets red hot in the in the furnace but that obviously red hot is not enough to melt that's nowhere near hot enough to melt melt the stainless so i'm hoping this will last uh, many years to come and of course increase my capacity that i can melt at any given time so there you go i think that about wraps it up wait for this thing to cool down and you can touch it but it's still quite hot <clears throat> and uh have a look at it and stick it on the lathe and and just uh, tidy it up see what it's like but uh, no i call that a success so there you go um just another way different way easy way of uh, melting aluminium and creating some bar stock uh, for your workshop as always i hope you enjoyed the video and thanks very much for watching cheers